Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So before starting this video, I want to mention two things. First of all, I was planning on doing this video like next year, probably when I have completed like three semesters or four semesters, because I would have like much more uh, idea of like how the courses are. I've taken like my share of courses and then I would be in a better place of doing this video. But I got a lot of like questions around this. Right now it's my first semester. I've been here three months. so. I don't really know everything about all the courses but I can at least give like some basic idea of what I am doing and th that way. So this is not like advice because then later if somebody takes a course based on my advice and like things don't go well, I don't want to be liable. So I'm just going to mention that's, that's why the title of this video is like what I am taking instead of like what you should take. But I did realize that people who are coming have like zero idea of what the courses are and how to go about it. So even like if I'm in my first semester, some information will be better than nothing. So I plan on doing it like a proper like probably a proper comprehensive video about this like a year later when i'm in my third semester but like something's better than nothing right so i'm, I, I'm that's that's why i'm doing this video because i have a rough plan of what i want to pursue and keep things light and the second thing is uh, it also depends on what your plan is for example if you want to do a phd in a specific research area then you have to take those courses and you also have to take the courses by that particular faculty if you have a faculty in mind uh, so things will be very different in that case and secondly if you want to like grind academically like I keep on saying things will be very different so if you're coming for that classroom environment then you have to take like those faculties who make you grind academically but for the 80% 80, 80 people who are just here for like getting a job getting an internship I think it's important to keep your coursework light because you anyway have a lot of stuff going on you have your on campus job you have your application for interviews your lead code and everything else so for that i'm one of those 80 percent people so for that you want to keep like things light and easy this video is centered towards that if you're a, if you're doing phd or then you'll have to eventually do your own research right i'm just going to share my screen and start okay so before going ahead with the courses i i think this is important i googled my asu SCAI which is the School of uh, Computing and Augmented Intelligence Handbook and I go here and I download this this is public that's why I'm sharing it everybody can access this so this is the latest handbook 2022 and 2023 it's important to go through all these admission and eligibility to MS degree programs they still have the update whether you need GRE like right now the, the requirement uh, has GRE in it it was waived off, I think, in fall 22, if I'm not wrong, but yeah, something like that. Also, I want to mention this very important thing here. So MS in computer science has two options, thesis and non-thesis. So the thesis option requires, this program requires 30 credit hours and a thesis. And uh, you need basically one, one, one subject. So one subject is three credits. So you need three credits. So essentially one subject from foundations one subject from systems and one subject from applications i'll show the list later thesis will have like six credit hours you can choose to not do two subjects essentially eight subjects and a thesis i think that's how it works i'm doing the non-thesis so i can talk more about that non-thesis will have nine credit hours, basically one 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 subject from foundation systems and applications all the subjects will either be one of these three so you have to take one 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 and then the rest uh, seven subjects you can do whatever like elective basically so you can do 21 credit hours from like whatever you want to do and then in in like it towards the end in your final semester you have to submit like a project portfolio which essentially will be of two subjects i can talk more about that later and also one important thing that i forgot to mention is yes this so the courses are numbered in such a way that first year is like 100 then 200 300 400 and like grad level courses are like 500 so most of the courses that i am taking for example are 500 level courses but you can take two 400 level courses if you're doing a master's program so a maximum of six credit hours which means six means six by three two of 400 level coursework is allowed a maximum of 12 hours of a combination of five 400 okay i don't know what the, this is but this is important some people do take like 400 level courses two 400 level courses are they easier than 500 level courses not necessarily it depends on the faculty if, if you have a chill faculty for a 500 level course then it's going to be easier than let's say you have a medium faculty in you know, a 400 level course so it it works that way now i go back to this page again the handbook page and then i go to cs course list and i download this area courses so this is the list of all the courses now i have it downloaded and marked so i'm going to show that okay so this is all the courses in the ms mcs list apart from this there will be some 598 topic courses which are like session b courses session b course i've talked about this in a previous video but there are some more courses in 598 which are changing every semester but these are like the main courses so i'm going to talk about what i have 
done and what I plan on taking up in my uh, entire curriculum. So for this semester, I have information assurance and security. I'll talk about the faculties in a bit, foundations of algorithms and statistical machine learning. So I have three subjects. In the next semester, I have knowledge representation and reasoning. That's one. The second one is a topic course, so it's not there in the list. Uh, it's uh, blockchain. And the third one, I have taken a random subject for now because I didn't get what I wanted. I've taken like this fundamentals of studies, but I'll probably just swap it to something else once anything else becomes available. The green ones are the easy courses. Again, this is based on very limited knowledge. I've been here for three months, so I take everything with a grain of salt. And the green ones are easy courses based on some particular faculty. So it also depends on who you're selecting as a faculty. But these are the ones that I do plan on taking. That's data processing at scale, uh, SVBT, SPQM, uh, data mining, semantic web mining, uh, data visualization. KRR I've already taken. So that's that. And the blue ones are not easy courses. Like they're medium to heavy courses, but they're like important and relevant. These are like one of the most relevant courses in ACU. So uh, DBMSI, this is actually a hard course, but I do plan on taking like one hard course because it's a little comprehensive and uh, gives you a good idea about stuff. So distributed database systems is also decent. I don't know. I don't know anybody who has taken it, but uh, like a friend of mine is taking it the next semester. So I'll probably know more. Uh, mobile computing is important. It's like mobile app. So like it can't hurt the projects are good. And cloud computing is also one of them like towards the relevant side of things. So if you want to take like relevant courses, and not they're not extremely hard they're like medium to hard so the, the blue ones are that i don't know anything about the ones that i haven't marked those are like more like concentrated so if anybody wants to go towards like cyber security then software security is a very good subject uh, then cryptography is there i can't see it anywhere probably somewhere um, then there's computer graphics here then there's ai which is probably important for people towards ai ml uh, like if, if you know that you want to do like a phd and stuff or if you want to become like a machine learning engineer then you probably have to take ai then you probably should take ai apart from sml although sml gives a very good anyway uh, i'm not going to talk about the courses in detail next thing is the faculty bit so for the faculty i've just picked those courses so every course that i've mentioned here in the left side is basically taken from this uh, so like I said, I've taken these three subjects here. Uh, I'm done with these three subjects. These are my faculties. IAS is super chill. It's like literally you will use 0% of your brain for this course. Uh, it's just a course project. And then the uh, midterms are open book. So it doesn't really take an open book as in like there's no lockdown browser. So you can use like chat GPT and stuff. So you don't have to study at all for this. Just have to do like weekly reports, which takes like probably half an hour a week so and then the final report which can take probably six to ten hours you're essentially investing like 20 hours in a course 20 hours in a 15 week period so that's pretty chill foundations of algorithms have taken by ali there's also d luca i'm not facing a lot of issues with ali and also it matters on a very subtle note that whether you have access to the previous year question papers and whether the faculty changes it because if faculty does not then well you have the solutions as well you can work on the solutions i don't know whether that's academic integrity i, I don't partake in any of it but uh, i'm just saying that if you do have access to that then at least you can have like some information on how the questions are i think dluca is slightly better than ali but you can take either of these i, I would put them in the easy bucket only because uh, but if you do not have any access to questions then ali might be very difficult ali's paper might be very difficult so whoever takes ali generally has access to the previous papers Otherwise, I think DLUCA is pretty good. I would, in hindsight, I might just take DLUCA, but I, I have Ali for now. Then there's SML, which is by Lee Yang. There are like four faculties. Any any one of them is fine. Again, it depends on whether you have access to papers or not. I have it by Lee. I would probably recommend Yang or Moses. I don't know, but like, I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind taking Lee. Uh, right away so i can actually recommend these three subjects they're okay this, this is absolute like this is a no-brainer like literally a no-brainer these two are again okay there I, I would put them in the easy bucket definitely not even medium for next m like i said i've taken krr by samira krr is also taught by ali which is which is again doable it's like easy to medium samira it's super easy this is also super easy course next is these are the ones that are easy. These are the like green ones that I mentioned and by, by which faculty. This is one of the most like, it's very difficult to get this course within like a fraction of a second. This, this course like just gets away during course registration. Same for the, these two courses as well. So this is by SWM by uh, Hassan, SPPQM by Golfello and 
एस एस वी टी वाई कॉलेज वाले बेसिकली दीज टू फैकल्टीज आर लाइक गॉड लेवल दीज थ्री फैकल्टीज टेक्निकली या सो वट एवर इज टेकन बाई समीरा कोलो फेलो और हसन गेट्स अवे लाइक रियली क्विकली सो डेटा माइनिंग बाई समीरा डी वी बाई समीरा एगेन वेरी चिल कोर्स डी पी एस बाई समीरा आई कंट गेट दिस वेंट अवे विद इन लाइक प्रॉब्लिक टेन मिली सेकेंड और समथिंग now if you don't get by this should you take that that's a question so dm by ayan banerji is still okay there's other, another faculty corner which i don't plan on taking dv by chris brian i might take this it's a bit hard like dv by uh, samira is super easy dv by chris brian is medium to hard but the project is like a little relevant so it's i think uh, the course is around d3 libraries in uh, javascript so the thing is like either take easy courses or take like medium courses which are at least relevant where you can put something in your resume otherwise like why even direct that effort into a subject right so dps by uh, cow i i saw that this course was filled really quickly so because since it's so difficult to get samira obviously first preference is samira but if i don't get by samira then i will probably take dps by uh, cow let's see and then there is distributed database system by diluca i figured that this course is fairly going to be easy because it got filled super quick now let's go towards the relevant courses so these are like relevant courses if if you're interested in something then then only you should take these are medium to hard courses so i plan on taking dbmsi by boskovic it's a hard course but it teaches you a lot of stuff cloud computing is kind of relevant uh, software security is relevant if you want to go towards cyber security by tiffany bow uh dv is relevant uh, it's not a trash subject so if if it's taken by chris ben if you take uh, dv by samira then it's going to be easy but you're not going to learn anything if you take by chris ben it's going to be medium to hard but you're going to learn some things i guess yeah. mobile computing by this is again a relevant subject if you're into like i think android and stuff if you want to become a developer so it won't hurt to take this subject and then ai i don't know about these two faculties a friend of mine is a phd under this particular faculty he's good he's very like well known in the research space in like planning and learning methods i guess yeah now i'm going to talk about the hard courses which i am going to avoid you are free to do like whatever you want so software security by fishfang this is an extremely hard course again software security by bao is okay but security by uh, i actually took software security by bao but i realized that i do i am never going to be interested in like cyber security network stuff so i dropped it for another subject like i dropped it for ias which is like a great switch because it's so easy Uh, but if you want to get into cyber security, you should probably take this course. But I wouldn't take this; uh, it's too hard. Then uh, computer architecture, I don't know, but this seems like a bit hard to me uh, by this particular faculty. This, by the way, is one of the hardest. This is probably the hardest course in ASU. Uh, it teaches you a lot of stuff, but I think it takes like probably a lot of effort. So you have to study for I don't know twenty hours a week, which is mad because there. Are Uh, subjects where you have to study twenty hours in a semester. So this is one of the hardest courses, and this faculty is like a top-notch faculty. So the better the faculty, the harder the course, right? So I think he needs the research lab, like a group of research labs, which is known as Cascade. I've seen like bad reviews about this faculty. You can go again to rate my professor, rate my professor is ACU. Yeah, Lynn Carter has like one point three. So I don't know. I, I don't know anybody in this, but I've heard like bad reviews about this faculty. So whatever. he takes is probably good to skip like i'm going to skip i'm going to stay away from this subject as well i've heard like bad reviews about the faculty ai by yuzang is pretty good ai by subarao is hard but good ai by uh, shivastu is haven't heard good reviews uh this okay this is like this faculty is insane apparently he's like very good but you will never get like above a b grade in this but you'll learn a lot you'll like grind academically so for the people who want to grind uh probably take this course i want to stay as far away from these two as possible and the uh, last one is this i again i checked and rate my professor and haven't seen any good reviews nobody has taken the subject so wouldn't i i, I will stay away from this so just to wrap up these three are the subjects that i have already taken these two are the subjects that i'm taking next semester and i also have to select one more these are the easy subjects that i plan on taking uh in like to complete my curriculum whatever i get out of this is like a a good pick uh that's it here yeah. and these are the subjects which are medium to hard but they're good subjects so you can like it's worth the effort out of these i think i i'll only end up taking probably the boskovic tvmsi and probably mobile computing by ayan banerji and dv by chris brand so because it's so so hard to get one of these easy courses i think it's important to also like put like two easy courses and then take one hard course otherwise it's going to be a little difficult it and hectic and these are the courses that i will definitely avoid 
and there are a bunch of courses which do not fall into these categories these are the white ones i think which i don't really know not a lot of people actually end up taking it so there's not a lot of data here and i can't really speak for those subjects but that's about it also one important thing that i forgot to mention is like these are the groups of each subject so you have to take one from foundation one from systems and one from applications so like i said i've taken uh, the yellow ones so for example i have taken one from systems about one from foundation and one from applications so you have to do this in like the entire uh, course like out of 10 subjects but i've already taken one 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 so i can take like now the seven subjects that i take like all of them can be in systems all of them can be in applications so luckily it happened so that i have one in foundation one in system and one in application but you have to you can take like two foundations or three foundations in your first semester but just have to make sure that after you're done with 10 subjects you should have essentially completed one 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 out of that and you also need two subjects for your portfolio like i said in the previous part of the video where if you're doing non thesis you have to do a portfolio so for portfolio you need two subjects which have like 50% weightage of a project so for example ias like the subject that i have taken has a uh, higher than 50 i think the project weightage is 50% so you need two subjects like that uh, ias has a 50% project so i'm going to include that in the portfolio sml does not have sml uh, weightage was 40% course project foundation of algorithms does not have a project so i need one more subject which has like a higher than 50% higher than or equal to 50% weightage in the project so i'm going to wrap the video up here i did this because most of the questions that i'm getting right now in linkedin and instagram are around courses because i think whenever i get like a part time question or uh something else then i just send the video that i've shared so like it that that video actually covers like queries that newcomers have but i think the course part wasn't covered and i actually did not feel that i was eligible but and i don't feel that i'm eligible enough to give you a comprehensive idea about the coursework but something's better than nothing so this is my plan you can take some bits and pieces of insights from this and uh create your own you don't have to do everything people are mostly worried about what to take in the first semester and that is completely justified i think this video will probably give a somewhat a good guideline towards selecting subjects so that's it for the video and i'm going to see you in the next one